right, so we're looking at lesson two, straight line motion and connecting position, velocity, and acceleration. In unit two, lesson seven, the big ideas of position, velocity, and acceleration were introduced. Particle motion problems deal with motion along a straight line. This includes horizontal and vertical motion of a falling object. It's important to note that this motion means the particle is moving along an axis, not along the graph. So, just some stuff we're talking about here. Vocabulary position generally uses S of T, sometimes X of T, sometimes Y of T, very rarely, but you can see it that way. S of T is, is the most popular one. Average velocity is the average rate of change, so we're talking about basically the derivative, aren't we? Yes? So the slope of the secant line there. Displacement over elapsed time. Instantaneous velocity, derivative of S of T, is the velocity. Function is the rate of change of position at any given time and direction of movement. So the derivative of the position function as it relates to time, ds dt, s prime of t, which is v of t. Yes? This is the limit definition of the derivative, isn't it? Okay. Speed is your absolute value of velocity. So you're not going a negative speed, but you could have a negative velocity, yes? Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function, which is the second derivative of the position function, yes? So the second derivative of the position Second derivative right there, d2s over D, uh, dt2 um, is the derivative of velocity, or dv over dt is acceleration. <coughs> Displacement is, we're talking about the change in distance, right? So your displacement is the position at b minus the position of a. It's the difference in the distance from start to stop. The distance traveled is the sum of the absolute values of the distances between the turning points. Free fall motion. Um, this is a function that we need to get used to using. So negative one half g is your gravity times t squared, velocity times t plus position. Direction changes. Velocity changes from either positive to negative or negative to positive at a point, which is time. Velocity does not need to pass through a zero or even be defined at a point where it changes signs in order for direction to change. Gravitational constants, so these right here, um, nine, this is your gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared or 32 feet. Per second squared. So those are just some given, given, that's gravity is what we're talking about there. You need to use those for, um, depending on whether you're using meters or feet. 9.8, we see 9.8 a lot. Used them all. All right, so let's go ahead and let's work some of this. The focus of this lesson is to make connections and transitions between position, velocity, and accelerations functions as they relate to the skills and rigor on the AP Calculus exam. We will look at the algebraic, numerical, and numerical problems, table problems, graphical representations related to straight line motion in this lesson. A particle moves along an x-axis so that any time, at any time t greater than zero, the position is given by this. So this is our position function. At t equals zero, determine whether the par particle is moving to the right or to the left. So how would we know that? What? To posi for position? Yeah, because we need the velocity function, don't we? And then we can plug in zero. Because if the velocity is positive, we know the, the position will be moving to the 
right. If the velocity is negative, then it's going to move to the left. All right. So we got to find the derivative x prime of t, which gives us the velocity. Wait, what is that the velocity? Is it speed? It's speed with the direction. Yes. So speed is the absolute value of velocity, right? So speed is always going to be positive. But the velocity could be negative, right? So is it falling or is it being thrown up, essentially? So what is the derivative here? 3t squared minus 9t, right? Because 9 over 2 times 2 minus 12. Do we agree? And so if we plug in 0 for our time for velocity, we would have... 3 times 0 squared minus 9 times 0 minus 12. So the velocity at time 0 is negative 12. Yeah, so the particle is moving to the left. <coughs> because the velocity at t equals 0 is negative 12. So the velocity of 0 equals negative 12, and negative 12 is less than 0. At what time does the particle change directions? So now what are we talking about? So we've got to find where it equals zero and then what? See whether it's changing from negative to positive or positive to negative, right? Okay. So we're trying to find where V of T equals zero. So V of T was 3t squared minus 9t minus 12. We need to set that equal to 0, yes? And then we could factor out a 3. We'd have t squared minus 3t minus 4. Do you agree? And factor that. We have a t and a t, and for 4, we know we're going to have to use 1 and 4 to get negative 3 to have negative 4. 4 and a positive 1. Do we agree with that? So t would equal negative 1 and t would equal positive 4. But are we talking about a negative time? It says where time is greater than 0. Do you agree? So we know that v of 4 equals 0. Do you agree with that? We need to see if on either side of it, it changes from negative to positive, don't we? because time is greater than zero. Right? Make sense? So we know this is zero, but we need to see if it changes from negative to positive or positive to negative. So we need to do one on each side. So V of three maybe, and V of five. So V of 3, if we plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, nine times 3 is 27, minus 9 times 3 is 27, minus 12. So this is negative 12. Agreed? For 5, 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75, correct? Minus 9 times 5 is 40, minus 12 is, uh, that'd be 35 minus 12. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. And 75 minus 45 is 30, minus 12 is 18. The big thing there is it's positive, right? 
So it's zero here, it's negative here, it's positive here. So at t equals four, the particle changes direction from what to what? So from left to right. Since <coughs> V of T changes from negative to positive. at t equals 4. So you notice we talked about the, the direction change from left to right because the sign changed from negative to positive. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you're very clear on that. At t equals 1, is the velocity particle increasing or decreasing? So now if it's increasing or decreasing, we're talking about a rate of change, aren't we? Yes? So we have to talk about the acceleration, don't we? So the derivative of V of T equals acceleration. So the derivative of V of T would be what? 3 times 2 is 6T minus 9. Do we agree with that? So at time 1, A of 1 would be 6 times 1 minus 9, or negative 3, yes? Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us? Mm -hmm. The particle's velocity, because it specifically asks about velocity, right? Mm -hmm. So the particle's velocity is decreasing specifically at t equals 1 since a of 1 is negative 3 and negative 3 is less than 0. So we had to answer the question about velocity, referring to velocity, because acceleration was negative. Does that make sense? So that's our explanation. We always refer to what it's asking for. So at t equals 1, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing? So the velocity, let's talk about the velocity. The velocity at 1 would be what? 3 minus 9 minus 12. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So the velocity at 1 is negative 18. Is Speed is always positive. Oh. But the velocity is negative, right? Yes, but the rate of change of the velocity is also the rate of change of speed. So the acceleration at 1 was what? So if your velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative, what does that do to the speed? Decreases. Yeah, think about it. It's slowing down. because of the negative. If both of these are have the same sign, this is how you're going to remember this. If velocity and acceleration have the same sign, it's going to be increasing. If velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, it will be decreasing. So if it's slowing down, how does the speed increase? 
think about this, if your velocity is positive, but acceleration is negative, that's when it's gonna be decreasing. Right? Velocity, what is velocity exactly though? Velocity is how fast is it going somewhere? In a direction. In a direction. What is speed then? So your speed is just how fast is it going. So like think about if you're throwing a ball up, right? So if you're throwing it up, that velocity is positive, right? Yeah. Same thing with speed, your speed is positive, okay. right? That's how fast that's going. But if you're dropping something, that velocity is negative, but the speed is still positive, right? It's still going at that same rate. So what is acceleration? So acceleration is like the rate of change, the rate of, change of velocity. So like at this point, is it going faster or negative or, or slower? Oh, okay. Acceleration. Is it accelerating? Mm -hmm. Think about acceleration of a vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So anytime your velocity and acceleration have the same sign, it will be increasing. The speed will be increasing. If they have opposite signs, it will be decreasing. So, since acceleration at one is less than zero and velocity at one is less than zero, I just wrote greater than, both have the same sign at t equals one the particle, particle speed, I guess, is increasing. <clears throat> what is the particle's acceleration at t equals one fourth? Explaining the meaning, explain the meaning of your answer in terms of the particle's velocity. So, acceleration at one-fourth. We'd have six times one-fourth minus nine. Do you agree? Uh, that would be what? Three over two minus 18 over two. Three minus 18 would be 15 over two. So, acceleration at one-fourth would be 15 over two or what, seven and a half? Is that fair to say? Seven and a half. Well, we put it in a fraction because the original problem was in a fraction. I would put it in a fraction, but sometimes it helps to think about seven and a half instead of 15 over two. Honestly, it doesn't matter, really truly. But what are we talking about here? rate of change of velocity. So what are we talking about as far as units go? Your distance over time squared, right? Because the negative 15 was your distance over time. Yes? And the 2 was your time. And so that means that this would be negative 15 over 2. Distance was, did it tell us? Wait, what do you mean? It did. I don't know. Right here, because... No, 3 minus 18 oh. is negative. Um, distance over time squared. I will tell you the first time I taught calculus, I didn't know anything about physics. I had never taken it. And I was like, you can't square time. That's got to be wrong. No, you can. And yes, it's right. <laughs> so what are we talking about the velocity? What about the velocity? Um, the velocity is changing at the rate of negative 15 over 2. 
And since it's negative, it's it's going to be decreasing, right? Yeah. So the particle's velocity is decreasing at time one fourth. And right here is what we're talking about by this amount, right? Negative 15 over 2 distance over time squared. All right. Let's look at the table on the next page. So this was using a function. Now we're going to use a table. The table below gives the velocity in feet per second of a particle moving along a horizontal axis. The velocity is a twice differentiable function of time t. So it's telling us that it is twice differentiable, meaning position, velocity, acceleration. It had to have been continuous to be differentiable. Differentiable. All right. At t equals zero, determine whether the particle is moving to the left to the right or to the left? Explain how we know. All right. So at V of zero, when X is zero, it's negative four, correct? Yeah. So you said since negative four is less than zero at time T equals zero, the particle is moving to the left, specifically at a rate of negative four. And what did it tell us? This was in feet per second, yes? Well, if it's moving to the left, it would be positive. Yes, moving to the left at a rate of four feet per second. Yeah, we wouldn't want to put a negative, two negatives in there, right? So velocity speed was going left or right? Mm -hmm. Or up, up or down? Or up or down, it could be. Up or down. Acceleration is just moving from one point to another. Mm -hmm. And its speed is just... It's going to be the positive acceleration. Okay. Uh, positive velocity. So if it asked for the speed of this, it would be four okay. feet per second. Is there any time during the interval from zero to 15 seconds when the particle is at rest? Think back to the intermediate value theorem, IVT. What did we know about the IVT? Oh, when it's like changing from negative to, to positive? Yeah, that has to exist somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. So it doesn't have, even have to be negative to positive, but in this case, that's what it's asking for, right? When is it at rest, so when is it zero? So the IVT told us that A, the function had to be differentiable and continuous. continuous. And then it, ha it said that if this value is negative and this value is positive, has there has to be a zero in there. So first thing we would start with is that V of T is differentiable so it is continuous right because it told us right here in the problem that it's twice differentiable only because it told us it was differentiable did we know that and since it's differentiable it's continuous all right and then let's look at this where in here does it go from negative to positive. Yeah, because it doesn't go from positive to negative, does it? So the velocity at two seconds was negative one, which is less than zero, and 
the velocity at three seconds was positive one, which is greater than zero. Therefore, by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a time between what two is less than t is less than three, such that the particle is at rest. Now, on the AP test, do you have to refer back to the intermediate value theorem? No, not unless it specifies. In fact, I would probably say I wouldn't even include that therefore by the IVT. I would say therefore there exists a time. You just have to make sure you list the conditions that it's differentiable and it's, con it's continuous and this is negative, this is positive. Therefore there exists a time between two and three such the particle is at rest. I wouldn't probably refer to the IVT because the IVT, EVT, MVT, all the VTs, you don't want to accidentally use the wrong thing because that could cause you to fail to lose a point. Does that make sense? Or cause you to fail to gain a point, I should say. So you don't have to specify anything specifically to a theorem. You just have to make sure that the conditions for that theorem are met. Make sense to you? I say this in here so that you remember what the IVT is. All right, use the data from the table to find an approximation for the derivative of the velocity at eight. Explain the, explain the meaning of the derivative of the velocity at eight in terms of particle motion. Show the computations that led to your answer and indicate the units of measure. So, derivative at eight. So I don't have eight here, do I? But eight falls between seven and 10. So 7 is less than 8, which is less than 10. So I can use the 7 and 10 to estimate my derivative, can't I? So the derivative of the velocity at 8 is about, this is an estimation. <clears throat> we would be doing what? V of 10 minus V of 7 over 10 minus 7, do you agree? So that would be what? <coughs> 5 minus 3 over 10 minus 7. So 2 thirds. What are we talking about? 2 thirds what? Feet per second. Feet per second. Squared, right? Because we're talking about the rate of change of the feet per second. So, at t equals 8, the particles velocity is, since it's positive, increasing at a rate, and that's an important word right there, right? At a rate of about two feet per three seconds squared. Now, could I said two thirds feet per second squared? Sure. Make sense? So that would mean that that was the, if it was the derivative, ver, uh, derivative of velocity where we're talking about what? Mm -hmm. 
All right, find the average acceleration of the particle from 10 to 12 seconds. Explain what the number means in terms of particle's velocity on the interval. So average acceleration. That's what we're looking for, right? And we know the average acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function, yes? <clears throat> between, between 10 and 12. So again, you're talking about the velocity at 12 minus the velocity at 10 over 12 minus 10. So that would be what? 3 minus 5 over 12 minus 10, which would be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And we know this is feet per second squared, isn't it? So the average acceleration was negative one feet per second squared. What does that mean about the velocity? It's decreasing. The particle would be moving to the left. The velocity is decreasing. So if your velocity is negative, the particle is moving left or down, depending on which we're talking about. Right, this is acceleration. So acceleration is referring back to velocity. Position is going to move this way or this way. You're talking about the actual position of something. Are you going to the left? Are you going to the right? Are you going up? Or are you going down? Okay. Velocity is how fast is it going, essentially. Okay. Mm. It's like on sort A, of. you say yes. the velocity is moving to the left. <laughs> the particle is moving to the left. Yeah, so why didn't we say because we found the velocity was negative. Here, we're finding the acceleration is negative oh, okay. because we're finding the derivative of the velocity. Which means that it's just decreasing in velocity. The velocity is decreasing. Okay. Yes. If we yep. talk about acceleration. Yep. Okay. Acceleration means, yes, exactly. So the average acceleration means the velocity was decreasing. Wait, so the average acceleration you're saying like was negative one? Yeah. Okay. So the average acceleration was negative one feet per second squared, which means the velocity was decreasing on average of a rate of one foot Per Wait, you mean the velocity was decreasing? Second, yeah. I said average, didn't I? Velocity means the velocity was decreasing on average, yes. Man, I said it and didn't write it. On average of a rate of one foot per, per what second squared? Good thing I have an erasable pen. It's decreasing on average rate of one foot per second squared per second per second could I say that too mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> okay let a of t equal the derivative of v of t is there a time t equals c guaranteed that such that the acceleration at c equals zero in the interval from zero to fifteen So what are we looking at between 0 and 15 to see that? <coughs> so you're talking about the acceleration now, right? So you're wanting to see where the derivative would have been possibly 0. Oh, where it changes from speeding up to slowing down? Yep. Right? That would be when the acceleration would be 0, yes? So we're talking about when the velocity is changing from speeding up to slowing down. 
So looking at your velocity as we go across our time, is there anywhere there that the velocity is higher and then goes back to lower? Right here, yes? So somewhere in there that your velocity had to be, or your acceleration has to be zero if the velocity is slowing down. So because V of T is differentiable, on zero is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 15. because That's the time it gave us. A of t is continuous, right? Tells us that it's twice differentiable, therefore it has to be continuous. So the velocity at from 10 to seven is gonna be positive, yes? And the velocity from 10 to 12 is probably going to end up negative. Yes? We can find that, right? The velocity from 10 to 7. Wait, so. Better? The velocity of 10 minus the velocity of 7. We're finding acceleration here. Over 10 minus 7. Velocity of 10 was 5 minus 3 over 10 minus 7 was positive 2 thirds. And velocity from 12 minus the velocity at 10 over 12 minus 10. So here we're finding acceleration here. This would have been what? 3 minus five over 12 minus 10. So negative two over two, which would give us negative one. That was negative, yes? So acceleration here and acceleration here change signs, yes? Thus, therefore, A of t had to equal zero somewhere on seven is less than t is less than 12. Because your acceleration had to go from positive to negative somewhere in that time interval. Make sense? And that would be seconds. <clears throat> okay, so we did a table. Now let's look at a graph. Says the graph at the right is y equals v of t. What time do we get out of here? 38. Okay. We got this. We're going to have to finish the next one Monday, though. That's fine. The graph at the right is y equals v of t, the velocity of an object moving on a line over time interval from 0 to 10. So we can see from 0 to 10 is our time, and this is our velocity function. Assume that the, uh, that the positive direction is to the right. So the velocity is the function. The derivative of this would be the acceleration. acceleration. Okay. On what interval is the, mo uh, the object moving right? Where's the velocity moving to the right? We're talking about where the velocity is positive, aren't we? Oh. Velocity moving to the right is where the velocity is positive, yes? So where? Yeah. Velocity is greater than zero. So on four is less than t is less than 10 the object is moving to the right. When is the object speeding up? So now we're talking about where is it speeding up? That would be where acceleration and velocity have the same time. 
same sign, right? So we're talking about when acceleration and velocity have the same sign. So where they're both positive or they're both negative. So the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. So you said from four to six. I agree. Right, because the slope, right? So here, the slope of this would be the derivative. That's acceleration. So acceleration is positive there. Yeah. So acceleration is positive here. And because this is positive, velocity is greater than zero and increasing, essentially, right? So the velocity is greater than zero and going up from left to right. How fast is the object moving at time equals three? So we're wanting the speed at time equals three. So remember the speed is the absolute value of the velocity at three. So I'm gonna say speed at t equals three is the absolute value of velocity at three. Well, what is the velocity at three? Negative so, uh, yeah, that's right. So at three, the velocity is negative five, so this would be positive five, right? So the object is moving, let's see, and in what direction, yes because it was a negative direction, yep. Okay, what is the average velocity over the time interval from zero to four and four to 10? Show the computations that lead to this. So from zero to four, what are we talking about? The average velocity? Rate of change. Hmm? Uh, like the rate of change? The just the top part. The derivative between. We're talking about the distance under the curve, aren't we? <laughs> so your average velocity here from zero to four, you're talking about your distance under, this velocity is gonna be negative, yes? Do you agree with that? Yeah? An average is gonna have to be divided by the total amount of time, do you agree with that? So the easy way to find this is to find the area of these sections. So I would find the area of this square. This is two by two, yes? Two units by two units. Um, there's a light in that, but yeah. So the, uh, um, the area under the curve. What is the area under the curve? The area, yeah, that's what we're finding. Yeah, and why are we finding the area under the curve? Don't know. Find the average velocity. So, to find the average of this whole thing. So from here to here, the velocity for this was what? At one, we were at negative 10. At two, we were at negative 10. At three, we are at negative five. At four, we are at zero. Yes? So do we add negative 10 together twice with the negative five and divide by four? Four. Essentially, yes. So here, what it, the easiest way to do this is find the area of each of these. So this is a two by two square, yes? under this curve, so from here to here. Okay, yeah. And it's negative, do you agree, because it's below the x-axis. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here from zero is less than t is less than four. We're gonna start with negative, this would be 20. And here, because of the triangle, it'd be one half of two by two, yes? 
Do you agree with that? So this would be 10 units. Do you agree? The area of that one would be 10 units. So you're talking about negative 20 plus 10 from 0 to 4. So from 0 to 4, we're talking about negative 30 total units, but because we're trying to find the average velocity. Wait. Why, why is it all negative instead of just the 20 here? Because all of this is under here is negative. It's all below the x-axis. So the average velocity would be negative 30 divided by 4, which is negative 7.5, 15 over 2. So, okay, so if we're going to do it the way he said it, it would, where do we get the 10? Because that's negative So five. this would be negative 10. Yeah, negative 10, negative 10, Plus. negative 20. Mm -hmm. And then this is negative 5, which is negative 15. And then what's or this right here? Five. You've still got some here, don't you? Oh, but I thought four, zero. So, okay, think about this right here. This and this. Half of it. Yeah? It's half of this square. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Oh, which is 10. Yeah, which no, is 10. But, like, the way he was talking. Oh, okay. <coughs> I guess he, he was, was saying the same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's finish this, this part, and then we'll move on. Tomorrow. Four from four to ten. So four is less than t is less than ten. Now this is all above. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. You could use a trapezoid if you wanted to, but here I'd break this up into a triangle, a triangle, and a rectangle. Can't we just add the two triangles together to get the same? You could. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you know this triangle is going to be half of two by three. Yeah. So this one would be fifteen. This one's going to be 30. This one's going to be 15. Do you agree with that? 15 plus 30 plus 15, however you want to do it there, total is 60. The average is going to be 60 divided by how many seconds from 4 to 10? From 4 to 10 is going to be 6, right? So this is going to be 10. That's the average velocity. And we will start at E tomorrow. I was hoping we could get that done, but.